Last week, I showed you how to use ordinary instant coffee to paint with. So freeing because it's not real proper paint. You can um, just play with it and have a lot of fun and do a monochrome. And a few people said, oh, we'd have liked to have seen a real time painting rather than a time lapse, which is what I did. Uh, you say and I listen. And I'm going to just show you how to draw out this little bird, how to look for shapes within it to make your drawing accurate, and then how to paint it in coffee. If you like this, please like the video and subscribe. And every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish I'd known about ages ago. This reference photo is from Pixabay and I'll put the link in the comments and also on the community tab here. So, easiest way I find of sketching birds if you're not that confident is first of all look for the centre line of the pose and birds come from eggs and they remain pretty egg shaped all their lives so put an egg over that line to to represent the body and then a smaller egg to represent the head and look is the head higher up or or is it hunkered down so the beak line is really important and then you can just put in a line to represent where the the tail and the wing is now you can start putting in the outline you've got the proportions right from those two ovals and you can start going around looking at angles maybe exaggerate them slightly if that helps you Look at the space between, say, the wing and the tail and look at the, the angles under the, the head. Look how the beak is almost in line with the top of the head, but the angle under the beak is a lot sharper. So, you know, just, just look, look, look and draw what you see and then work out if the eye is above that central beak line or below it or on it. And in this case, it's above and then you can mark in where the wing is, um, work out the, the end of it and just carry on adding in a few contour lines till you're happy and then at that point if you were doing a drawing you could start to put in the markings and the shadings and carry on. Of course if this is a sketch for a painting you don't need to put in any of that but just check all those angles and keep challenging yourself to, to work out what's what's going on. From here it's just a case of adding in as much detail as you want so I'm starting to shade and um, just see which way the light's coming from put that beady little eye in and, and do all those sorts of things but um, I'm not a great detail person. You could do this a lot more carefully or say you could start using coloured pencils or ink or, or whatever you fancy. But just always look for the, the eggs in a bird and it will really help you get proportions and shading right. Now it's time to do the sketch for our actual painting and I'm using watercolour paper here because the coffee won't go on to ordinary paper. Um, so I'm doing it double quick time because we know what we're doing now but just always look for that that inner egg and see how important that central beak line is because it shows whether it's sort of into its chest and it's about to go to sleep or alert and looking around. I am putting in the twig and some of the berries to uh, remind me of what I want to put into my composition just doing it all very gently it's an HB pencil I don't want to damage my paper and I want to be able to erase it later and once again I'm putting in those those outlines um, checking constantly about angles and proportions and making sure I haven't made any particular silly mistakes with with my um, underlying structure so always looking and checking back at my my photo even when it's something really simple and just adding in probably a little bit too much detail here but uh, you can take out anything that you don't want so all those construction lines I'll take out 
um, because I don't like pencil actually showing through in my final painting. I am going to put in the beak line and where the eye is because if I get the eye in the wrong place then that would be a problem but I just want to put in a few few indications to help me and that's all fine. When you're happy with your drawing you can obviously stop you don't need to put in too much detail and then we can start getting our coffee ready I mean the coffee is not tricky literally boil a kettle and use um, instant coffee it's so much easier than using proper coffee because you've got a lot more control over the strength and the darkness say so just use some boiling water mix up a strong a medium and a very pale wash and that should be good uh, it, it cools down really quickly so it's not going to damage your brush and that that'll be fine uh, here I am doing the very pale wash with hardly any coffee in it at all and as soon as that's ready we'll be set to go it's worth just testing out your coffees to make sure that you have got the the variation in tone that you're looking for so here that was my lightest one which is nice here's my middly one yep that's a good color too and this is the dark one you'll find the dark one actually dries a bit shiny and the brush marks really show so i'm using a round brush i think it's about a size eight it's got a lovely good point on it so i use that pretty much throughout and I'm starting with the eye but I am being careful to leave little flashes of white to show the structure of the bird and um, because coffee is quite tricky to layer uh, it's quite too hard to to build layer on layer I am trying to get my darks dark first time so I'm looking at my photo, working out what's going on and just stroking the bird in the direction that the feathers and the markings go. I'm working on dry paper here because I want it all to be crisp but as I go along I can drop extra dark coffee into the wet wash and it'll all merge nice and softly which is lovely. So it's wet on dry but then wet in wet and I'm trying to connect different bits I don't want to do the whole head and then do the body and so that the head ends up looking stuck on I'm just sort of developing it down taking my time and enjoying the smell of that uh, coffee and then uh, I'm getting the, the the beak shape in it's actually got a very big beak this one so um, I'm not actually happy with how I put the, that under beak in um, so I had to sort of sort that out and sort of make sure that I got, I got those angles right. But hey ho, never mind. It's often better just to go with what you've got rather than panic and try and blot it out because you just make it a mess. So starting to put the markings down and starting to, to build up the form. So I put some dark down and then I'm using clean water to blend that away to get the fatness of that chest, which is nice. And you can just blend that away from dark through to light. So I've got a variety of crisp marks, but then also nice soft blended marks. And it's always worth looking back at what you've done and then just dropping an extra color if you need to. And here I'm putting some little marks in wet in wet and then using the edge of the brush to put in the secondary feathers on the wing and and then the tip of the brush to start putting that really dark end of, of the wing in and I'll put in where the, uh, the primary sort of flight feathers are you can just see them as lines so just just pop those in like that which is is great um, salt works really well in coffee if you're sprinkling just ordinary table salt into a drying wash you get lovely little snowflakey marks which look just like the little downy feathers so have a go at that if you fancy it um, what you can also do is just use some of the coffee and crush it between your fingers 
and then sprinkle that into the wash and you'll get little dark marks as well. I'll do that in a second, you can see that. But I'm just popping the tail in to balance everything up. Um, and I've got the dark of the end of the wings. Now I need to get the dark tail. And it's quite fun to sort of work around your picture and, and build up your balance. But to say, always looking back and dropping in extra color so that it can merge into the, if it's all still wet, if it had already dried, these would end up as hard marks. I don't want that. I want his chest all be sort of fluffy and lovely and contrasting with some of the hard marks elsewhere. So here I'm crushing in that coffee and just sprinkling it in to get really fine, very dark marks. I guess if you've got powdered coffee, you wouldn't need to crush it, would you? Okie cokey. So just going to finish off the back of um, this bird. And now I can start working on, on the berries. Uh, the berries really are circles with just little highlights. There's not a lot to them. It's nice if you make sure that some of them touch and merge and some are separate, you know, make some of them darker in tone, make some of them lighter in tone. So even though they are all very simple, you just want to put in whatever variation you can manage. Um, might need to just wait for them to dry a little before putting in some extra dark for the shadow and just look at the balance of things and make your own judgment of what the composition needs and where you want to put them. So I know I did put them in my um, initial sketch. I didn't really have to do that, that at all, but I, I'm kind of ignoring my initial sketch. Uh, and I'm putting them where I fancy at this point. Uh, when all this is dry, I'm going to rub out the pencil line, so it doesn't really matter, does it? And I'm building up the berries and seeing where I want them to, to be. They're pretty abundant on this bush. I'm not quite sure what it is, so I am putting in plenty of them. And now putting some behind the bird as well, because I think that just balances up the composition. And again, you can see how I'm letting those two touch and merge and keeping that one separate. So that should all be fine. It's time for the branch. And I thought that I would use a mapping pen so that I could get some very fine lines. Um, if you watch last week's video, you'll see that uh, you can actually use a pen with the coffee and it acts almost like a coffee ink but actually I don't know why it just wasn't working I did use the pen for masking fluid during the week so maybe it was still gunged up I think I'd have been a lot better off just using a very thin rigger but I persevered and I think it's okay in the end so I think it's quite fun to have some very fine lines and to, to contrast with the other sorts of marks that you've done uh, I'm not bothering with the, the foot of the bird because that's all pretty much hidden in the berries and the leaves but of course if it was more visible this mapping pen or the fine rigger would be a really nice way of, of putting in that that foot uh, gripping the branch but say I didn't particularly need that so here just putting in a few more of the stalks making sure everything's connected together but just having a fun with some of those marks and directions and then I'm going to come on and start working on the leaves which will be good because that'll start to pad it out and, and make it look complete and the leaves try and do them in a single stroke so if you've got a brush with a decent point you can start gently push it down onto the paper and then lift it to to get the the point at both ends of the leaves what i'm going to do is actually do the leaf strokes in one stroke but i'm going to leave a tiny gap of white and repeat that mark on the other side so that you end up with a white sort of central stem on these leaves it's quite a nice sort of simple way of doing them, but just adds a little bit more interest rather than just having a solid leaf. 
The other thing I do to add a little bit more interest is as those leaves dry, just go back in with a bit of dark paint um, at the end so that you get some sort of tonal variation. You know, as I say, we've only got one colour here, so we've got to do as much as we can to make it as interesting as we can. And I just carry on building up these leaves in no particular order. It's just the, the composition that I fancy to sort of balance things up. Um, if you're not sure and you're concerned that you're going to put too many in or not in the right place, of course you could sketch them out or, or just stop and have a quick think about where you want them to go. But I'm sure your gut reactions will be right. I thought this wing was a bit short so I am going to make it longer in a moment and um, you know I'm just adding in a few more darks and a few more details because this bird's dry so I can get some crisp details in if they've disappeared or if I need to strengthen anything and that, that should be fine. If you need to dry an area you can use a hairdryer on coffee it's not going to burn or anything so don't worry about that. So if you want to have any crisp marks and an area is wet, just make sure that it's uh, you, you dry it thoroughly. On the whole, it dries pretty quickly, but don't get caught out by the fact that thick areas of coffee are shiny and you'll think that it's still wet. And in fact, it's actually dry. So um, that caught me out a few times. I had to keep poking it to make sure that it really was dry. So, just merging things in and and working on the sort of final details here you know sorting out that beak I wasn't terribly happy with um, if anywhere's gone too dark you can use uh, a damp brush I like a little short flat brush and it's damp you just give it a bit of a scrub and then dab away any coffee that you've loosened with a kitchen towel and it does actually lift really really easily I didn't need to do it on this painting but if you if you do don't worry about lifting it'll be absolutely fine as always with with watercolor or coffee <laughs> in this case uh, far better to stop too soon than too late because you can always go back and add more what you can't do is take it away as easily so if you're not sure about adding anything do go and make yourself a cup of coffee to actually drink rather than paint with you know and then you'll come back with fresh eyes and you'll either think oh yeah yeah I do need to do more or you might come back and think oh no it's finished um, really is knowing when to stop is a real skill in watercolor and if, if you struggle with that, the more you look at your painting, the more you're likely to fiddle. Well, if you, if you do struggle with that, say, just take yourself away. Yeah, go and empty the dishwasher, go and make a cup of tea and just let your eyes have five minutes rest and you'll find that's a lot easier. It's when you sit there with a paintbrush in your hand, so easy just to poke at your painting and fiddle 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 and potentially you actually ruin it because you go a little bit too far so I'm going to listen to my own advice and stop in a moment just adding in a little bit of tone to the branch um, just to give some variety say when you're only working one color you've got to make that color work good and hard for you uh, I am adding in a few berries and things just to, to balance up and you can see that some of those are a bit lighter. But we're on the homeward straight, we're very nearly finished, just thought maybe to emphasise a couple of the sort of central um, veins of some of those leaves and just add in the stalks which I thought made rather nice shapes but uh, the berries have sort of I guess it's where the flower used to be, um, just little dots. So I'm adding those. Some of the berries are still wet, so they're quite diffused, and some are dry, so we get nice sharp ones, and I quite like that sort of variety. Uh, oh, here's the central vein I was talking about. And again, just uh, a few extra leaves to balance up. 
in a second I dropped my brush which was very silly of me and it made a bit of a strange mark but actually as always if you don't panic it's probably okay I know that's a mark from where I dropped my brush well, so do you <laughs> but no one else will know it's fine and there we go I don't think we've really got an awful lot to do now say so once it's all dry it'll be good to take out any pencil lines with an eraser and apart from that I think I really must listen to my own advice and put my brush down hope you've enjoyed this um, it's just fun to play with something that isn't proper paint and it lets you be free and and loose and um, of course if you hate coffee just use watercolour instead so if you found this fun or useful please think about subscribing and if you can hit the like on the um, film it does help because the algorithm shows it to more people so that that would be great so the final thing I do here is add a little bit of spatter to it um, I don't think it was necessary at all and really I, I shouldn't have actually done it I don't think I didn't do too much so it didn't look like it had um, chicken pox okay See you soon. Thanks for watching.